Voters.com now offers the U.S. Aids to Navigation System in Google Maps, and it's free. Simply log on to www.theboaters.com forward slash explore to view over 70,000 marks, including day beacons, lights, and buoys. So let's go over the nav aids, as they are commonly referred to, and why they're important. Think of nav aids as road signs for boaters. Just like highway signs, nav aids tell you where to go or where you are. The goal of the system is to promote safe navigation. There are two basic types of aids, beacons and buoys. A beacon is a stationary nav aid, such as a lighthouse or a single pile structure, and can be located either on land or in the water. Lighted beacons are called lights, while unlighted beacons are called day beacons. Buoys are floating aids to navigation. They're used where fixed aids would be impractical due to the depth of water. Boaters should steer clear of both beacons and buoys for their own safety. Never tie your vessel up to a nav aid or anchor close enough to hide the aid from view of other boaters. Each aid's function can be determined by its color, shape, light characteristic, and sound. Some nav aids are part of the lateral system, while others have no lateral significance. We'll go over the lateral system in part two of our series, and the non-lateral aids in part three. First, let's go over the lateral system. Lateral nav aids indicate which side of the aid a vessel should pass when entering a channel from seaward. For example, green-colored odd-numbered aids should be left to port, while red-colored even-numbered aids should be left on your starboard side. Some mariners like to remember the rule, red right return, meaning when you're returning to a harbor from a bay, for example, keep the red aids on your right. Or if you're cruising the border of the United States, you should keep the red markers between you and the mainland. We should note that this is the lateral system used here in North America, but the system is somewhat reversed in other areas of the world, such as Europe and Africa, so don't get confused if you happen to cross the pond. Preferred channel marks often mark a wreck or obstruction. The color of the top band indicates the preferred channel. So if the top band is green, the preferred channel is to starboard. Often a vessel may pass this type of aid on either side, but a nautical chart should be consulted first before making a determination. Check out part three of our series to explore nav aids without lateral significance. Now we'll conclude our mini lesson on the U.S. Aids to Navigation System by going over aids without lateral significance. Let's start with safe watermarks. They have red and white vertical stripes and indicate that there is navigable water all around the mark. Not to be confused with isolated danger marks that are black with one or more red horizontal bands. These are positioned on or above an isolated danger, but may be passed on all sides. Diamond-shaped dayboards are used in conjunction with the appropriate nautical chart simply to determine your location. Range boards will help you maintain a safe course within a channel. These aids work in pairs. By lining up the dayboards, you will put your vessel on the range line. Often these marks are lighted and can be very useful at night or during other times of reduced visibility. Information and regulatory marks will be white and orange in color. These will mark the no-wake areas, boat exclusion areas for swimmers, or danger due to shoal areas, just to name a few. Yellow special marks point out particular areas such as traffic separation schemes, designated anchorages, or even military exercise areas. And finally, if you've done any boating on the intercoastal waterway, you may have noticed unique yellow symbols on the nav aids located there. Little yellow triangles, squares, and horizontal bands simply identify these aids as marking the ICW. Nav aids, <laughs> I know, there's a lot of them, thousands of them, and the United States Coast Guard is responsible for their placement and maintenance. But they can't possibly keep track of all the aids by themselves. They've got things like national security and saving lives to deal with. 
So for the safety of all boaters, they rely on the help of everyone out on the water. If you discover any type of problem with an aid, be sure to report it by radio or phone to the nearest Coast Guard station. Navigational aid changes are updated weekly in the USCG Local Notice to Mariners. This is an important tool that should be used along with the appropriate nautical chart. For more information, visit the U.S. Coast Guard Navigation Center online at www.navsen.uscg.gov. And that'll do it for our NavAids 101 series. Although this was a brief overview of the system, I hope it was helpful. For the Boaters TV, I'm Stacey Hanrahan.